Let me recognize the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. Estes, to inquire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Baldholt, last week we heard that the, um, the retirement mandate excise tax would not a, uh, would exclude people making less than four hundred thousand dollars. Do the proposed tobacco and nicotine taxes exclude people making less than four hundred thousand dollars? The uh, the taxes are imposed at the manufacturer uh, level, and there's no provision to exclude a purchaser uh, based on uh, who purchases the final product based on income. So there would be a tax increase if somebody the, used tobacco. Uh, the anticipation is that the price of pack of cigarettes uh, or vaping products will increase. Yes, sir. Has JCT developed a distributional analysis of the tobacco and nicotine provisions to determine how that? would impact uh, different income levels? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, we have, and I can provide that to the committee later this afternoon. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, do, you, do you happen to know off the top of your head how much of that would fall on income for households uh, that would income are under 400000 uh, Well, I think I do have some information about uh, uh, the present law excise taxes on Tobacco, which would be about the uh, uh, about the same, and uh, we kind of project that there's uh, roughly good 12 plus million smokers, and most of uh, most of them have incomes uh, under two hundred thousand dollars, like like well over eighty uh, percent. So most of that tax would fall under folks under under present law. Yes. Yeah. So, well, I'd, I'd like to see the distribution when you get a we'll, chance. We will uh, we'll provide that to the uh, to the entire committee later later today, sir. And per particularly concerned with the the median income being less than seventy thousand and the impact that'll have on folks. Um, has has the JCT developed a distribution analysis for reviving the Superfund excise tax? Uh, the Superfund uh, excise taxes uh, uh, are a tax on inputs in, uh, in other products generally increases the cost of uh, uh, a large number of products uh, used by uh, a large number of consumers. And so our analysis of the incidence is that the tax is borne by consumers through higher purchase prices of these uh, of these products. So the short answer to your question is is yes. Uh, the longer answer is that uh, our distribution would show the effect of the tax uh, distributed pretty much as consumption uh, occurs across uh, tax filing units, and that will be part of the uh, uh, distribution analysis that I had uh, uh, mentioned. I think to uh, Mr. Kelly that we would be providing later today. And, and doesn't doesn't the burden of that tax also fall on the middle income households? Uh, uh, again, uh, as general consumers, yes. It's a tax that affects the prices of goods for general consumers. So yes, and particularly since that's a, a bigger percentage of their disposable income has to go to those those required consumer goods as opposed to having additional disposable income. Uh, that's generally the case, Mr. Estes. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.